Welcome back to Switch Corner, it's volume 6 of our Hidden Gem series. You're going to find this video here every single Tuesday, and the idea is simple. I'll introduce 5 games and tell you why I like them, and why you should maybe consider adding them to your library, or at least your wish list. It's not only good because I get to, you know, dig into older games, but I also get to cover some more modern releases that maybe I couldn't get to, you know, first time around. Basically though, look at it like this, it's 5 quick fire reviews, and it's just a good way to find some new games to add to that collection. With that though, like hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. So first up today then we've got 4 Metal Furies and as co-op action RPGs go, I genuinely believe this is one of the best available on the console today. It does have single player though too, I will say if that's more your thing. Coming from the creators though of Rogue Legacy, this is a great follow up release and it's not nearly as talked about which is honestly a shame. This in its combat is definitely kind of like a beat em up, but that's all backed up with like levelling up, progression systems, all the things you'd expect to find in like a traditional RPG experience. Here though you'll be joining a cast of four seriously likeable characters who basically set out to take down an enemy known as the Titans. While it starts light enough for sure in its story, it actually gets, I've got to say, pretty intriguing, which is something that actually kind of surprised me. Some great humour though, cutscenes, there's very little I disliked with this game, meaning I can't actually really think of anything right now. It brings depth though thanks to its RPG backbone, there's a ton of missions, a strategy thanks to, you know, multiple weapons, upgrades, but sometimes if you just want to beat down on some enemies, you can do that here too. It melds these two genres together perfectly. While it is best experienced in a co-op setting, the single player is very good too. There though, you actually gain the option to switch the character you're in control of on the fly. If you're worried by the idea of it being best played co-op though, just know it's not only like local play, it also supports online too. That said, you may be hard pressed to find someone online like a lot of Switch games now this long after release. So if you do want to play it that way, I'd say either know someone with the game already or find someone to kind of buy it alongside you. You can get a lot of playtime out of this one though, and I'd say easily somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 hours. So next up then, let's trade in RPG mechanics just for like all out action with Seno Crisis. Played Smash TV, you'll know what to expect here. It's an arena based twin stick shooter with an alien theme. So basically move into a location, kill everything in sight and move on. It's brainless, but it's seriously entertaining and I gotta say as well, challenging. I've got my ass kicked by this game more than a few times and yet I still find myself coming back to it over and over again. What I love about this one, it's the retro visuals, but it's not just retro for the sake of, you know, pulling on our nostalgia strings, but this was actually built to run on the Mega Drive or Genesis and Dreamcast. That's right, you can actually right now buy this game on a Mega Drive cart or a Dreamcast disc alongside this eShop release. At the time of this video, in fact, you can pick up the Mega Drive version starting at like £40 or Dreamcast for 30 It is a UK site, hence me talking about pounds here, but shipping internationally super cheap, so I'll link that in the description below if you like the idea of that. That said though, like the eShop build is just as good. Don't expect like some deep story, but do expect a throwback as you take on the role of Marine out to destroy this like alien nemesis located at Outpost 88. This Switch version then as well obviously being on a more modern console even includes some extras over the retro releases. Great art, great gameplay, multiple difficulties, multiple weapons, single player, local co-op. If you like to shoot stuff this is in my eyes a must buy. So here's a more recent release for you now, Return of the Obra Dinn, a game so unique first of all in its visual style that I envision people took one look at it and quickly walked away. I wouldn't even describe this as an acquired taste but something I haven't quite seen a game look like before. Then even the storyline, if the visuals didn't put people off enough then the opening line on the eShop probably did, penning itself as an insurance adventure with minimal colour. Not exactly selling excitement, let's face it. Fortunately though, I went in not quite knowing what to expect but giving it a go and I absolutely do not regret it. Here's the story though, in 1802 a merchant ship it sets out from London for the Orient loaded with 200 tons of trade goods. Six months later when it's due to arrive at its destination, it never shows. Written off of course as you know lost at sea, this ship and cargo is basically all but forgotten. That is, until five years later, it drifts up to port, damaged and without its crew. Now that's where you come in, you're an insurance investigator for the East India Company, and you must basically get to the bottom of what happened. 
What basically proceeds from there is this just like intriguing mystery adventure where you'll be given full control just to explore the ship and then piece this mystery together. This one is seriously challenging but the reward is huge and it's really simple in idea but just perfect in execution. Perhaps the most interesting piece of the gameplay is your pocket watch. Here you can actually rewind time to uncover the offence that took place. I'm not going to give any more away, just play it and if you need a final piece of persuasion, this one actually comes from the genius behind the now legendary Papers, Please. Very few games stand up to the craftsmanship on display with this one. So our penultimate game of the week then before we get to one of my favourite games of all time, but this one it's Dead or School. Now excuse the relatively poor visual quality of this one, there's no question it's not the most you know polished of games, but what it lacks there from like a technical standpoint, it just makes up for with pure heart and just fun. The idea is ridiculous. Here you're a young girl who finds herself trapped in like an apocalyptic future where humans have withdrew themselves to bunkers underground due to like mutant creatures that have taken over the planet and it's basically been this way for like the last 70 odd years. What that means is our young hero, she never knew like a normal life, but one thing has always fascinated her thanks to her grandmother, the idea of school. I think her grandmother was honestly lying to her personally, she called school a paradise of fun. But yeah, that's the motivation of our character here. Get out there basically, save kids, take out the mutants and start up a school all while meeting this just like crazy cast along the way. I will say with this one there's a tiny tiny bit of fan service but nothing major so don't let that put you off, the trailer kind of likes to glorify it. For the most part what we basically get is a 2.5D hack and slash platformer. I'd personally consider this one of the more obscure releases on the eShop and it will no doubt continue to grow kind of like a cult following. But I really enjoyed it, the action was just like fast paced and fluid, the music suitably epic in like that kind of cheesy way, and then the story dumb but surprisingly entertaining. I just found the whole cast here kind of charming. It's basically a metroidvania, you're working through different subway stations, taking like back control of them, but thankfully the gameplay is solid to back all of this up. Anime fans in particular, you should definitely pay attention to this one, it's literally made for you. And if you were thinking of wishlisting this one and waiting for a sale, I don't blame you, just know at the time of this recording, this has never been on sale before. I reviewed it over on the channel, I'll link that at the end of this video if you want to kind of like learn more about Hasako and her world, she's an absolute badass. Alright so the last game of the week, I think on the Switch it's not really talked about but it's also not really a hidden gem, in fact genre fans it's one of the best ever made, Grim Fandango Remastered. I want to use these videos as an opportunity to talk about some of my like favourites as well and this is one that I have currently like two art prints on the wall facing me as well as my clock in this room is literally a character from the game. This though is a really solid remaster I gotta say as they came in and they not only improved you know the resolution as we would typically expect, but they rebuilt the lighting engine, they re-recorded the soundtrack with a full live orchestra, they added like an art gallery and developer commentary, they even repainted all of the characters. It's never looked this good and with the story it just holds up to this day. With Grim Fandango though you'll be taking on the role of Manny. In this variation of the afterlife the journey between death and your eternal resting place it takes four years. And you as Manny you're a travel agent who sells luxury packages for this you know trip. Unfortunately though arises and you're going to find yourself exploring this world trying to prove you're innocent because you kind of got wrapped up in this like conspiracy, it's threatening everything you know just about your life. The Yuma is hands down some of the best you will find in a video game, the cast of characters incredible, the soundtrack here stunning and everything about this game quite honestly for me at least is close to perfect. For this remaster then they even improve controls with just like more fluid movement, definitely helps kind of get over its age, you gotta remember this game released in 1998 so that, that control change goes a long way. The only warning I would give you with this one, it's still very much a product of its time and some of the puzzles can not only be difficult but kind of weird in the way you solve them. As I say though I love this game, I can't recommend it highly enough and if you're even slightly curious about it just wishlist it because I've seen it go on sale a few times now at like 90% off. And that's it another 5 down, sure that last one's a classic but look the game is 22 years old now so no doubt some of you out there will not know it so it's sneaking into this 
this list this week. Plus, I've never had a chance to talk about it really before on the channel, so now very much felt like the time. If you do agree or disagree with any of the decisions this week, let's talk about it in the comments below. And then, like as always, I want to give a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It truly is appreciated, so thank you all so much. If you want to check that out for yourself, I have linked it in the video description below. With that then, look, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.